First up, we'll look at the muscle highlighted now, which is the piriformis. Superior and posterior to the coccygeus, this muscle originates medially from the anterior surface of the sacrum and travels out of the pelvis laterally to the greater trochanter of the femur. You can see in this image now how the piriformis makes up the posterolateral wall of the pelvic cavity. This muscle is a lateral rotator and abductor of the thigh and is innervated by the nerve to the piriformis. The second muscle, which forms part of the anterolateral wall of the pelvic cavity, is the obturator internus. Similar to the piriformis, it originates within the pelvis and exits to insert on the femur. Specifically, the obturator internus originates from the posterior surface of the obturator membrane and the surrounding bone and inserts on the greater trochanter of the femur. Just like the piriformis, it is a lateral rotator and abductor of the thigh but its innovation comes from the nerve to the obturator internus. Okay, so now that we've covered the muscles of the pelvic floor and the walls, we're going to move inferiorly to identify some more muscles in this region. What we can see here is the levator ani, which we know makes up part of the pelvic floor and supports all of these pelvic organs. Inferior to the levator ani, we can see some more muscles. These are the muscles of the perineum. The perineum is a diamond-shaped space, inferior to the levator ani between the thighs. The four points of this diamond are the coccyx posteriorly, the pubic symphysis anteriorly, and the two ischial tuberosities laterally. If we connect the dots along the ischiopubic rami and along the sacrotuberous ligaments, we have our diamond-shaped perineum. The perineum can then be divided into two triangles by drawing a line between the two ischial tuberosities. This forms an anterior urogenital triangle, which contains structures related to the urinary and genital tracts, and a posterior anal triangle, which contains structures related to the intestinal tract. Within the urogenital triangle, we can further divide the space into two parts. In this image, we're looking at the female pelvis and perineum that has been cut in the coronal plane. This is the bladder, sitting within the pelvis, which is bounded inferiorly by the pelvic floor. Inferior to the pelvic floor is the perineum, and since we're located anteriorly, we're in the urogenital triangle. The dividing line between the two spaces within the urogenital triangle is this structure here, which is the perineal membrane. The perineal membrane divides the urogenital triangle into two parts the superior deep perineal pouch and the inferior superficial perineal pouch. So from the pelvic floor, as we move inferiorly to the urogenital triangle, we find the deep perineal pouch, then the perineal membrane, and inferior to that, the superficial perineal pouch. If you found this quick anatomy or physiology video helpful, you'll enjoy our video tutorials even more. Click on the button and you'll see what I mean. We have hundreds of videos available to our premium members, not to mention all the fun quizzes, complete articles and atlas sections to solidify your knowledge. Click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy and physiology.